There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Have you ever had those moments when you know you've got some extra cash in the bank account and then you just aimlessly spend it all while thinking, I know there was some good reason I was saving this money, but I can't remember what that was for. If that's you, you're so not alone, and this episode is for you. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. The CFP in me, if I'm going to put on that hat, it would tell you that we all have these black holes in our spending, like the vortex that just sucks up more cash than we can imagine. We don't want to know. We don't want to think about. Just leave me alone over here. I'm spending my money. I'm minding my own business. Thank you very much. I don't even care to know how much money I'm spending. We all have these. This is a part of human nature, and it's cool, and it works. Well, I mean, it works until you need the money for something that you want to do in life, and then, man... Have you ever had this feeling where you just wanted to invent a time machine and go back, splash cold water in your face before you hit the buy now button or before you went to the drugstore and somehow managed to spend $100 on literally nothing that you needed? I don't know who is raising their hands right now, but I have this innate ability to go to the drugstore and spend money and I look at what I got when I got home and I'm like, why did I buy this? I don't need any of this stuff. I mean, I need it, sure, but it's not stuff that is critical or things that I have to have. And I look at the receipt and I'm just, it's that moment of just sheer dread where it's its like, how could this possibly be $75 or $50 or $100, whatever it is? 
I think for some of us, it's that it's that Target vortex. <laughs> you know what I mean if you shop at Target. It is impossible to get out of Target for under $100. And a lot of people poo-poo that statement like, that is not a fact. I can go into Target and get what I need and get out of there for under $100. Well, if you can do that, you win a prize. Like you're getting your name and your photo on the wall because I don't know a single person who ha- is able to do that. In fact, we even upped our Target budget by some obscene amount of money, just so that I wouldn't get to the end of the month and be totally frustrated at how much money we actually spent on Target. But you don't have to admit it to me because I know that it's it's already a fact of who we are. We all do this no matter what our income is. There's this area of our spending that we spend too much on. We may be somewhat consciously aware of it, but we don't spend time calculating it or thinking about it or God forbid putting any sort of boundary around it. We're just okay with doing it because we don't really have to answer to anybody and we're comfy. Maybe, yeah, there's other things that we'd like to spend our money on, but who cares, right? I think that's the mentality that so many of us have. So I was reading this article a couple months ago that just kept popping into my head and the title of the article was Spend Money Where You Spend Your Time. And I thought, this really makes sense. So what I did is I did this experiment. I did an inventory of all the places where I spend my time. And and I thought, what would it look like if I allocated extra money to these areas instead of going to the drugstore and Target and buying stuff that I I didn't really need or that didn't serve a huge purpose? Obviously, there's stuff that you got to buy. When you're at the drugstore, you're at Target or where, whatever that might be for you. There's a reality to this. We got to buy some stuff, obviously, to take care of ourselves, to take care of whatever personal needs we have. I won't go into too many details there, but <laughs> whatever we need, right? But then there's that extra stuff, that stuff that just sneaks into that cart and it it starts to add up or it's those extra meals out where... We know maybe we shouldn't spend it, but our friends are going out, so why not? We'll just go out with them. But So I really looked at like all of those areas, and I thought, okay, if we could allocate extra money that we're spending on just nonsense to upgrade the areas of our life where we spend time, what would that look like? And you know what? A lot of really good stuff happened for us, and a lot of good stuff happened for me, both mentally and physically, which sounds crazy to take it that far, but let me explain. So I can't keep this a secret. I really had to share because this was an interesting experiment I did over the last six months when I I lost my hearing in my left ear in October 2018. It really shook up a lot of things for me. I started to think about what goes into my body? Where do I spend my time? How am I spending my money? What is the definition of balance in my life? Like, What does all that stuff look like for me? And Oh, in a lot of ways, I was balanced. In a lot of ways, I was doing good stuff for my body. But I started researching stuff. And I mean, it just, yes, you can go overboard. Yes, you can become the person who has to have non-toxic everything and clean out all your cabinets. And absolutely. And if that's you, more power to you. Like, you go for it. Then there's me, who is a little bit in the middle, still trying to figure this all out. Like, what things are good for me, what things are not good for me. I certainly noticed when I put different stuff in my body, eating wise, my body changed. I started to have a lot more energy. I wasn't anxious. I've talked openly about the depression thing. Like a lot of things changed for me just by what I was putting in my mouth, what I was eating. And so I thought, well, that's super powerful. What about the other stuff? What about the other areas where I spend my life? Could I create change in those areas that then would have a dramatic or even just a small impact. So the first area that I wrote down where I spend most of my time, and likely you do as well if you are human, is sleeping because we spend about a third of our lives sleeping. Can you believe that? A third of our lives we spend just asleep. Um, Some of us more than that, of course. But An interesting statistic I found, it said, given that an average person sleeps for eight hours in a day, that means that average person will sleep for 229,961 hours in their lifetime. So I'll just leave that there for you to ponder. 
sleeping is a huge area where we spend most of our time in our lives. So does it make sense to upgrade that? We'll get to that later. So the second area is eating. Yes, I do love to eat, although like I said, I've gotten super serious in the last six months. I've cut out so many different things like gluten. I found out that I was sensitive to gluten, so I cut that out. Eggs, dairy, all sorts of things to try and help my ear, try to reduce inflammation, but also really honestly just to help me feel better, to help me not feel anxious or to not feel edgy or to certainly not feel depressed, like all of these things, these really, really simple things made such a big change in my life. I was really shocked, honestly. And a study done in the US said that an average American spends 67 minutes per day eating and drinking beverages. Okay, that's not totally shocking, but that's over an hour every day that I spend eating and drinking. So summed up together, the average person spends a staggering 32,098 hours eating and drinking beverages in their lifetime. So let's uh, fair to say that there's a lot of time spent to eating. And so we could also then maybe make the correlation that what we put in our bodies does have so, some sort of impact over the quality of our lives. We could probably argue that one <laughs> back and forth for many, many, many podcast hours. So number three area I looked at is working. And I try to have really one day a week where I do not do anything. Not social media. I'm not working on podcast episode. I'm not working on project. I'm not writing chapter from my book. I'm not doing anything. But that is, if I'm going to be honest with you, that is so freaking hard because if you're an entrepreneur, even if you had a side hustle, you know what I mean? Like you are always working in this thing. And I feel like I'm always working or thinking about working or researching something, but I love to work. So it's kind of like this weird mixed area for me, but I equally love to relax and not think about work. Like if you gave me the option on most days of like, okay, you could work or you could go hang out on the beach and just be total zen, balance, veg person, I'd probably say like, okay, let me strike a little bit of balance between the two, but I'm probably going to lean towards the beach. And that's certainly way different than I was in my 20s. In my 20s, I was like, I'm working, I am grinding, I am going to like be superwoman, I'm going to take on the world, and I still want to take on the world. Don't get me wrong. There's still that superwoman power inside of me. I just have a little bit different perspective on it now. And I think that balance is is critical. Like I think, what if I didn't find that balance? Like, what if I spent all my time just working my ass off and I didn't think deeper things about myself or really examine what things make me feel better. But anyway, that's me. I and I digress. <laughs> so area four is working out, oddly enough. And I was a semi-pro athlete when I was younger in two sports. So when I was little, 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 I was actually being trained to go in the Olympics for swimming. I have these like crazy broad shoulders and I am definitely more athletic build than I am the tall supermodel build. <laughs> in fact, that's sort of been uh, my whole life. I've been like, oh, what would it be like to just be super tall and skinny? That would be really awesome because I always felt like I had this super weird body. I have these really muscular arms, these really muscular legs, these small waist. It's just it's a pain in the ass to fit in clothes. I mean, I'm not... I'm not saying I can't find clothes. It's just that a lot of things have to be tailored and blah. You, you're not here to hear my endless debate on this, so <laughs> I won't bore you with this. But uh, I do have really good shoulders for swimming, and I also have really good shoulders for tennis. So I was really, really good tennis player, and I probably could have turned pro if I would have decided to do that. But it felt like a lot of pressure on me and I don't feel like I was really capable to, to make that decision. Like I didn't have the life skills in order to really think that one out. But yeah, I still, still, there's still a little fantasy inside of me of like, what would that have been like to be the Serena Williams or Venus Williams of tennis? But anyway, I'm older now. And so 
that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> but I do love getting to go work out. And when I'm done, I always remind myself that I am an athlete. And I think I can't separate that from myself. And I felt really good. But sometimes it's a struggle to, <laughs> to get motivated to go to work out. But there is a large portion of my time that is spent trying to work out, particularly in the last few years where I've been on this quest to just heal my body and heal my mind. So I started to think about like, what would it look like to upgrade all those areas of my life? And I wondered if it would really make a difference. And the truth is you don't need a lot of cash to do this. So there's probably, you're probably listening, thinking like, yeah, okay, great, Shauna, but I don't have cash to do this. But you don't need a lot of cash. But think about this, like, what if you got a tax refund or a bonus or a raise, et cetera, like some large, whatever that definition is for you, chunk of cash, it might be worth thinking about how this could work for you rather than another trip to the drugstore or Target to spend money on stuff that really won't have a real impact on your life. But I mean, okay, who are we kidding? I'm not going to stop going to Target. (laughs) I just can't stop going to Target. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash ETM for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. 
Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin T A L K A N Money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin Money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The hosts, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away, and back to basics of building your portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, we've got an Ask Shauna from Tabitha, which is actually a success story. Tabitha says, thanks, Shauna, for the variety of episodes. When I tell people about your podcast, I always say, but you'll never get bored because she mixes up the episodes all the time. It's cool because I never know what I'm going to learn about. So thanks so much for that. I just wanted to share a story with you. This last year, I got super serious about my money, and I knew I had to get rid of some junk from my past that my family has told me about money. I was so scared to step into the career I really wanted to do and knew that I should be in. I went back to school last year and I'm totally excelling. I have no debt because I learned how to track my money better thanks to this podcast. And I've already taken a job in my new career and it's more money than I could ever imagine. I negotiated for a higher starting salary and got actually $25,000 more because I asked the question and I knew my value and my worth. Honestly, I feel like I can breathe for the first time, and I know you didn't do this directly for me, but you gave me the confidence to do so. I never thought a podcast could change my life the way this has, and to everyone else listening, you can change things you just have to believe and take some action. Please don't stop this podcast. If you do, I'm going to have to find you and beg you and plead until you agree to keep going. Just kidding. Okay, kind of. But please don't stop. (laughs) I love this, Tabitha. Thank you so much for sharing this. It sounds like you've had an amazing year. My God. And you're right. I didn't do any of this, but you took the action. You took the initiative. And I think it's great to share stories like this because so often we're just talking about money questions that people have or we're talking about money stresses. But I think we also need to highlight those things that have really gone right for people where they have stepped out and said, this might be scary, but I'm going to try this and I'm going to see what what happens. And my God, you negotiated $25,000 more for your job. That is just incredible. In fact, you have to write back and you have to tell us what you said and how you did this. But again, thank you so much. I mean, that's what I love about this podcast and and doing this podcast. And I hope that's what you like about it as well, is I'm really trying to bring you so many different topics and conversations and stories about money so that maybe something doesn't resonate with you now, but maybe it will in the future. Or maybe there's just a story that you're like, you know what, I feel like I can relate to that story. And that story just takes a load off me. It makes me feel a little bit better about my money or about my situation. And there was something also that you brought up, Tabitha, that I just wanted to chat about quickly. You shared that your family really wanted you to be uh, in a certain career or they had cultivated a certain career idea for you over the years. And that really wasn't where you wanted to be. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. I mean, I was brought up in a family that was really pro me just like shooting for the stars and and no dream is too small but also sort of felt like I was supposed to fit in some sort of box if you will and certainly when I got in the financial industry it was like 
you want to do what? You want to create products and teach financial literacy and a podcast and videos and books? Like what? There wasn't really this diagram for that. And so I think it's really easy for family to just, I don't want to say load you down with expectations, but it's really hard when it comes to your career, especially when you're trying to do something different that is it may be different than what they think is the traditional career, but I'm I'm happy you took a leap. And to anyone else who's listening, you got to do you. You got to be you. And at the end of the day, it's your life. It's not anybody else's life. And as long as you're not doing harm to somebody, as long as you're not doing harm to yourself, I think you got to, you owe it to yourself in this life to explore all of those different sides of you, all of those different interests, because you just never know what you could cultivate. So thanks so much for sharing that, Tabitha, with us. And seriously, like, just keep rocking on. Okay, so we've got these four areas of my life, which I've done this little experiment about to see if I spend more money where I spend more time actually does change something. So the first was sleeping we talked about. And just think about everything that goes into sleeping. So we've got the sheets. So the sheets itself, it's really worth the expense to have a good quality sheet. Now, you don't have to have like crazy hundreds of dollars of sheets, but a good like breathable sheet that you just feel good on that is enticing to you. Like if you get in a bed with sheets and they're like scratchy or hard or just uh, gross, it's not going to induce like a quality sleep for you. And then we've got the mattress. Hello. It's the mattress. It matters. There's so many great companies now like Casper and one that I recently found out about called Avocado Green Mattress, which I am so jonesing for, that are non-toxic, that don't have... Did you know that mattresses have chemicals in them? I did not. This is something new that I'm learning. And You spend most of your life, as we've just talked about, a third of your life sleeping on this thing. You sleep on it for eight hours and everything that touches your skin or that you come in contact with, it it seeps into your body. It's not just something that just lays on your skin. Like This stuff can actually affect the inner workings of your body. And even if you're listening to me and you're like, that is way too out there for me to even buy into, I get it. I'm cool. I've been there. But just think about what is the mattress that you're laying on? Is it a good quality? Do you need to upgrade your mattress? I know that mattresses are expensive. There are lots of ways now where you can buy a mattress on like 0% interest. There's companies like Affirm and and uh, d- different financing companies now where as long as you pay it off in a year or however long that period is set, you can have an awesome good mattress. And it really does matter that you get the right mattress for your body and what you're body is going for. And then of course we've got pillows. Yes, they matter. They matter. It's the like fluffy little thing that your head's laying on. And what about a fan? Even like a good quality fan in the summer just to keep you cool and to keep you sleeping is worth it. We've got air filters. My gosh, I have allergies out here in Los Angeles. They just came out with a new study that all of Southern California has the worst air quality of anywhere in the U.S. Thank you very much. No matter why, that's probably why I can't breathe most of the time. So we've got to have things like air filters and blackout curtains so you can sleep. All sorts of things like that. Like what are the different components of sleeping for you that maybe are keeping you from having a good sleep? What about upgrading some of those areas so that when you wake up in the morning, you're just like so super refreshed? Like ready to take on the day, even if you do not like the job you're going to. But you could just have that vibrancy in the morning and it's not instantaneous. I still roll out of bed sometimes like, uh, but you know what? I feel good. I feel comfortable when I get in bed, when I'm going to sleep. And so I think that that is a real worthy investment. So number two is eating. And I think eating is, I hate to burst your bubble, but It is the number one place I see black hole of money for most people is eating out. We spend much more money eating out than we are consciously aware of. So I'm going to ask you a question. Be honest with me. 
Do you know how much you spend on eating out? No judgment. Absolutely no judgment. But if you don't know, find out. And that includes everything like coffees and yogurt runs and Uber Eats. All of those things are included in eating out because they're all things that you don't necessarily have to do. Yes, you have to eat, but you don't necessarily have to eat out. So just find out what that number is for you. Because remember, knowing these numbers is empowerment. This is empowerment. This is going to put you in the know. Then you have all these sort of decisions to make. But if we're talking about eating as an area to upgrade our lives, there's lots of things we've got our pots and pans. Old pots and pans don't cook food as well as they should. So there are lots of ways you can upgrade pots and pans without spending a ton of cash. We also bought a lot of healthy staples that we use in a lot of recipes. So we spent money on those staples that we would have those. We did silly things like we bought jugs to make green tea at home so we don't have to run to Starbucks and we can also control what green tea we're drinking. So like all sorts of little things like that that just made cooking and eating at home more enjoyable. So I think anything that's going to, again, make cooking for you something that you're motivated to do at home, those are worthy expenses because I kind of gather that you spend equally as much time eating and sleeping as I do. That's just a crazy hunch, (laughs) but I'm just going to throw it out there. So number three, work. Work's a tough one, right? It's like, ah, do I really want to spend money upgrading my work life? But this is going to look different for everyone. For me, I work wherever, at home, at the university I teach at, on the plane, at my parents' house, but I got to be mobile. So wherever my laptop is, that's where I can work. And it's great, but it's also not so great because I can work anywhere. So what did I do? So I upgraded this new mouse. Mouse sounds crazy. How how many times have you actually thought about your mouse? You should. So I upgraded to this new mouse that doesn't hurt my wrist. And by the way, this mouse is the best mouse I've ever found. I found it on Amazon. It was like 10 bucks. I have n- no value in telling you that except I want you to own this mouse. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes to this mouse. So we've got our mouse. We've got a computer, obviously, if that needs to be upgraded. Things like new headphones. I mean, for now, I've got to rock the one ear look. So I've got to get earbuds. I can't have the fancy Beats headphones that I'm so jealous that Jeff has, but I can't have those because it just kills my ear. (sighs) I'm really sad about that. But okay, moving on. (laughs) I also got a really good pen that just makes me feel so happy when I write with it. And a chair. Think about the chair. The chair is the thing that keeps your booty happy. So it's worth upgrading some of these things just to have a more productive work experience. So lastly was was working out. And we belong to a yoga studio, actually. And I am also fortunate enough to work out with a good friend who's a private trainer once a week who gives me the extreme friends and family discount. And then we walk, we do online videos, we do things like that. So we try to work out like, I would say four to five days a week on average, if we can. Some weeks are a little tougher than others, but that's that's the plan. That's the goal. So that starts with good workout clothes because they do matter. And I used to buy all this cheap stuff, but then it would fall apart and I wouldn't feel good about wearing it. So I think investing in some good basics and then build out from there is a great investment shoes that really fit your feet, not like the shoes that you think look super cool necessarily, but the shoes that actually fit your feet, like that's a really good investment. And then there's all sorts of creative ways you could do this. Like for the yoga, we found this deal on on Groupon. And so we signed up and it was, I, I think it was like 50 bucks for both of us for two months of unlimited yoga, something like that. It was a really good deal. And we went a lot of times, so we we wouldn't feel bad about the unlimited thing. And then when they asked us to join after the Groupon was up, I negotiated with them and scored a monthly unlimited deal. So it never hurts to ask. And you just never know. I mean, a lot of these studios are, <laughs> they really want people. And so sometimes they're willing to cut deals here and there. So those were the four areas. And those were the areas that I really thought were super impactful for us. Again, you could have different different areas, but 
there really is some argument in spending money where you spend your time. So I thought about, okay, how do you know how much to allocate to upgrade your life? Because I, I pretty much figure you might have that question. And it's it's always like the million dollar question because there's really no right answer. <laughs> I know, I, I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing that from me, but there is really no right answer. So what I did is I started with a list of items in each of these different categories and how much each of those items would be approximately. And then I put them in order. I ranked them like, what is the number one upgrade that I could do right now that's going to have the biggest impact on my life? And so we started from there and then just kind of like worked our way down. Then the months where I knew I was going to have more cash, I would allocate somewhere between like 25%, 50% of the extra cash to upgrade. And then the rest would go to savings or other goals. I never wanted to put all of the extra money on the upgrade because I'm a big fan of kind of playing both sides and making sure that some of the money is going into savings or paying off debt. And then some of the money you're using to buy something or upgrade something, whatever it might be, right? That's just my strategy. You can totally do whatever works for you. And then I think most important is to always have an action plan for the extra cash so that it really goes to work for you rather than just that evaporation syndrome that we talked about in the beginning of this episode. And there are lots of other areas you can upgrade, right? Car, although yes, it depreciates, but still you got to have a car that works and runs. Certainly clothing items that you wear all the time, like say you're a nurse or you're on your feet all day or even things like air conditioning that help you sleep better and have better motivation to work out and to eat in and all of those sorts of things. Like all those things really do matter. So after my experiment, I can tell you that I noticed a difference in our quality of life. And this isn't just BS. I'm not making this up. It really did happen. And our bank account, we, when we started to upgrade these areas where we spent most of our time it's weird. It's like we actually found more money to do this stuff. We were more proactive in how we were spending our money. And it wasn't that we were necessarily bringing in a lot more money. It was just, I think, the conscious awareness of what we were trying to do. But it's ongoing and something that we didn't do over just one month. It happened over a course of many, many months. So lastly, I just want to say this is all about balance. And if you keep that front of mind in terms of your money, you're going to save yourself a lot of stress, and hopefully really reduce the pressure to be perfect. Because the pressure to be perfect, my friend, is so sorely overrated. I don't even want you to buy into it. I just want you to think about balance. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free, and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.